was doing some watercoloring and I thought I would do a little bit of a tutorial. This is um, very basic. Um, I believe it would pretty much be for beginners. And all I did here was this is um, one of the Cam and Chloe stamps from AC Moore that I've been talking about. And I stamped this out in archival ink, um, one of the brown colors. And use my Tim Holtz. Let me see if I my light source is down here, so let me focus this way. Use my Tim Holtz distress markers. There you go. You get a good, good view of it there. And just did some coloring. Used just put these little white dots on here. Um, a little bit of wink of Stella in the middle and on the leaves. So what I thought I'd do is, you know, give you guys a look at this and if you like it and it's something you want to watch me um, color the second half of, then um, you can join along. So, and we are pretty well actually focused in, so we'll stay right there. These are the colors that I picked out for the um, petals and for the center of the flower and for the leaves. And I'll go through them real quick. That's Cracked Pistachio. Um, evergreen bow. What is this one? A stormy sky. Squeezed lemonade. Fossilized amber. Antique linen. And frayed burlap. So <clears throat> the main thing is when you're doing watercoloring. Um, of this nature is I really want a gradient of colors so you can use any colors that you like but if you have two or three in the same palette um, then you can kind of blend them together and with watercoloring the blending does not need to be perfect by any means so I am using a watercolor brush and just laying the color down on my mat and what I find when I'm doing watercoloring, um, and, and pretty similar to Copic coloring, is that you need to put at least a couple of layers down um, if you want to have some depth to it. So the first layer you're putting down is really just to get the color down. Um, with this, I used two layers, and then you'll start seeing you know, more depth as the coloring goes on. So I'm taking my lightest color blue and just coloring in the entire leaf. I probably will not talk a ton as I'm doing this other than telling you what I'm doing because I'm not good at that. <laughs> I am not good at talking and doing. So I need a little bit more color and I will, oh, here we go. Really try to make sure I'm staying in frame here. And again, that's, I don't do a ton of tutorials. I guess I just need to pay attention, but I always end up out of frame. So I'm putting this lightest color down and then we're going to color half of the leaf, the petal, with um, the next darkest color. See what I'm talking about? I cannot talk. I just keep a paper towel handy so that I can... wipe up my mass and so this is the next darkest color and I'm going to just start from the middle and pull it about halfway out and then I'm just going to take a wet brush and blend it just a little bit and you of course can do water coloring with just one layer
but I really like the riches, richness that you get when you add layers. And we need some more color. Evergreen bow, is that how you say that? I'm not even sure. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my darkest color blue. And this we're just gonna put in like the inside about quarter of the petal. And again, you're just very easily just putting color down. We're going to do more blending and shading. Oh, there we go. See? And just blending that a little bit with some water. Okay, that's pretty wet right now, so I'm gonna let that dry and go on to the center. I already put one layer of the lightest color yellow I am using, so I am going to do a little bit more of that, and then I'm gonna add the darker yellow. I want to make sure I have all the blue off my brush and I'm really just going to put that everywhere in the center here. Well, that was easy. <laughs> so, and now I'm going to leave the very center of the flower the light yellow color, but I am going to come in on these outside areas and add the darker yellow. So you have just a tiny little bit of highlight here. We are going to come in later and define the edge around the outside so we don't have to worry too much about being really precise and then we're also going to end up covering it with Wink of Stella. So my center is done and what I'll do now is the leaves and you probably can't tell a ton but the leaves do have a little bit of color, so I colored them completely with the antique linen. And then just did, I'm going to put a couple coats of this on and then did some highlighting with the um, other brown color. I may speed this up in here a little bit. We'll see how long this video ends up being. So yeah, this is the Cam and Chloe stamp. I know I've been talking about them a lot lately from AC Moore. I just, I'm really enjoying getting these stamps for $2.50 with a coupon. Actually, that's all wet, so I'm going to go back to finishing my flower. So I'm going to pretty much do the exact same thing again. Um, so here you see this is with one layer of color, and this is with two, and you can see how much more rich that. Let me make sure I get my colors in order here. I think what I need to do if I'm going to do this is like mark off a little spot that I can be in so that I know 
I'm in frame. We're just going back over that entire area. I love, love, love watercoloring with my distress markers. Okay. Just keep a paper towel handy to clean things up. Clean each color up as you go. And then I'm going to start taking just a little bit more care in what I'm doing here. Just to make sure I'm getting the color where I want it. And then I might just wash that out a little bit. But I'm not, um, oh my goodness gracious. I don't want to be over, like I don't mind if some of the brush strokes show. That is okay. And so what I'm doing off to the side here you can't see is I just have a paper towel that I'm dabbing my brush off on if I want to get some of the ink off of it. And I don't quite have enough to finish up. A little bit more. Some for the table, some for my hand. <laughs> And if at any point you find that your paper is just getting too wet, because like this is getting pretty wet right now, you, you know, just let it dry for a little bit or you can hit it with your heat gun. Okay. And so now I have my very darkest color. And I'm going to put this down, this color down, and then once it dries, I'm going to come back and just do a little bit of shading. So now I'm like really following the veins here a little bit. If I do any more of these guys, I know I'm probably... I will mark off to make sure I'm in camera, in frame. <laughs> I wish the caps of the Tim Holtz markers I know it has a little picture of which tips on which end but I wish it just there was some type of recognition on the cap itself so that when you go to grab it you know without having to you know but just just by glancing at it which end you have And these, you know, it does dry just a little bit differently as far as color is going to lighten up a little bit. Okay, let me go back to my leaves. Actually, I'm just going to do 
one color of the lightest I'm going to come in and do just a little bit of shading with my darker brown color. And I'm going to do shading. I mean, this is going to be very subtle. I'm going to follow some of their shading and then just put shading down like, you know, behind the petal here. Yeah, I'm going to try and do this without turning the paper. really hard to tell right there by that leaf or by the petal what is petal and what is leaf and some of this there's no rhyme and reason to I'm just getting a little bit of variation in the color and once you put the wink of Stella over it it's really gonna blend it out even more. Oh, I think I forgot this guy over here. And the stem. That's good. I'm going to leave a little bit of highlight on that leaf. Try and blend that in a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and use the small tip of the marker. This is still very wet in here. And try and just bring some definition to the center of the flower. And then in addition to that, I'm going to come in and just do a tiny bit of highlighting back with the water brush again. And because the paper is wet, I'm just kind of dabbing and pulling the pen towards me a little bit. Because if I were to color like this, it might um, start shredding the paper a little bit. Okay, and you can pull some of the lines out. Just to give a little bit more definition to the center. Probably would be better if I just panned out a little bit. There. And you can get as detailed as you want here. But the petals that are underneath, you're going to just give them a little bit of shadow. Of my two watercolor pens, this one is my least favorite, <laughs> and I only know from using them, but I don't know which is. One of these is a Tim Holtz pen, water pen, and the other one was just some 
random brand, but this other one I have with the pink lid is um, the water <laughs> flows slower so you have more control. This one just likes to do, likes to spew out a lot of water. But you can just play with it until you get it the way that you like. And sometimes I will go right to the paper with the ink, especially when it's wet. Because sometimes when it's really wet, you cannot um, get it to absorb any more color until it dries. And then you can just blend that a little bit. Okay, so I think I am going to go with that. And so the next thing I'm going to do is add my Wink of Stella. And with this, I um, just, I, I don't know, I did, knew beforehand that I wanted to Wink of Stella all the leaves and then the center of the flower. Let me just make sure I have my clear. Many of you know that I am like addicted to Wink of Stella. I love it. I have started using it um, a little bit less. I still use it all the time, but maybe don't put as much on the project as I used to. But it's awesome. Michaels now sells the Wink of Stella. They're pretty expensive. Like eight dollars a piece or something like that. Um, and so when you add Wink of Stella, this isn't going to show very much, but when you add it over a distress marker, it will activate the distress marker again, so your colors could spread a little bit more. Really not going to see that here, but. Um, I did pick up a black Wink of Stella. I've only used it a little bit, but I love it. Okay. And then I'm just going to put my dots on and fix this one. Sorry, I don't like this right here. <laughs> so that's a nice thing about distress markers is you can come in and keep blending. Um, so we're all done except for the white paint pen, and this is the Elmer's white paint pen. I love it. Um, my flower is still pretty wet, so I'll have to show you it when it's completely dry. But all I did on this one is just put running down, dots down some of the seams there, or the little folds in the flower, about a third of the way down. So I'm going to just stay in frame and well, I'm gonna get my pen going. Ah, I got it going too well. <laughs> um, you really should shake it with the cap on. <laughs> oh, my little nib just came out. That is one thing I've noticed with this, and I don't know if it's just mine. The nib comes out really easily. So like there, I was just shaking it and the nib came out and there's paint going everywhere. There we go. My goodness. I think it just gives a really nice detail to your end product. 
And again, nothing with this needs to be perfect. That is probably why I like watercoloring so much. Ta-da! Okay, so here is the final dried product. I cut it out with a Spellbinders die, put a little Wink of Stella around the outside as well. I'll do a close up in a minute. Um, this flower, it, this is, it's almost 100% dry. Um, this flower did come out a little bit darker than that one and that's absolutely fine. Watercoloring is not a precise science. <laughs> um, I also came back and did a little bit more highlighting and once your image dries, um, that's definitely, you can just, you can come in and layer as many times as you want to. It's just important to let um, some drying happen in between. So I took the pointy end of both the dark yellow and the dark blue and just did a little bit of um, highlighting in the center there. And then I also came back, the leaves, um, I still felt needed some more shading. So I took my darker color and just added some more shading right over the top of the Wink of Stella that I had put on there. And um, the water and the Wink of Stella blend together fine. So let me do a quick little super close up here, if we can with our light stars. And you can see all the shimmer there from the Wink of Stella. I must not have used quite as much ink over here um, but I like, I like both of the flowers. Okay, so if anyone has any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll be talking to you guys soon. Bye-bye.